एस चांद प्रेजेंट एजुकेशनल वीडियो लेक्चर्स एज पर दी ए आई सी टी ई कारिकुलम डिफिकल्ट कॉन्सेप्ट मेड इजी स्टडी एनी वेयर एनी टाइम टूडे वी आर लिविंग इन अ डिजिटल वर्ल्ड सो डिजिटल वर्ल्ड कंसिस्ट ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस डिजिटल वर्ल्ड कंसिस्ट ऑफ द न्यू टेक्नोलॉजीज विच आर एसोसिएटेड विद द कंप्यूटर्स दिस पर्टिकुलर सब्जेक्ट the programming for problem solving in this subject we will study about how the computer works how we can give the instructions to the computer so that a computer can perform our desired action hi i am dr shriyash atri welcome to s chand academy today we are going to start with the subject programming for problem solving before we go ahead these are the some good engineering books from s chand publishing in this particular subject we are going to study about the what is computer what is computer science and engineering and how we can write the instructions so that computer can perform what we want computer to do in part 1 we will discuss about the basic anatomy of the computer what is computer and what components computer includes in the second part we will study about how program is stored and executed and what is operating system a very brief introduction about the operating system what is computer the full form of a computer is a commonly operated machine purposely used for technical education and research so we all are using the computer this is a computer world right now we are using the smartphones we are using our smart tv we are using our desktop laptops all these things are consists of the various components of various sizes so we will study about the components of the computer system and uh, and what how the computer system perform how this computer system works together so these are the components of the computer system every computer system consists of these basic components that is cpu this is the brain of our computer then primary memory random access memory one by one every slide in every slide we will cover every topic in detail then output devices input devices and then the our hard disk or our permanent storage devices all these devices are connected with each other the cpu is controlling all the devices together so let's begin with the one by one first we will start with the input device input device basic components of the computer we all are using the input devices keyboard mouse and apart from this when we are our mic are connected with the computer systems or any electronic devices mic is called the input device scanner because we are scanning our hard copy and converting the hard copy into the uh, soft copy so scanner is a input device then this is also a barcode scanner we generally use this barcode scanner in our uh, shopping malls when you do the shopping these barcode scanners scan this barcode the details of the product display on the computer system uh, all these are called the input devices there are lots of other input devices as well as well like touch pad magnetic ink card reader or the uh, credit card reader or debit card reader we, uh, which we generally use uh, uh, when we the, the machine which on which we swipe our credit card and debit card our next component is output unit what are these output units output units monitors are projectors are speakers or you can say headphones speakers printers from which we are getting the output plotter printers we have seen plotters every printing big printing house is using these plotters to print or big images big pictures okay all these things are used with the help of plotters so these are the basic output devices of our computer system uh, our sound card because sound card gives us the output in terms of sound so sound card is also a output device video card video card is also a uh, output device so these are the various components of the computer system in the previous slide we have studied the input device and in this slide we have studied about the output devices so till now we have studied about or uh, about the input devices and various output devices 
Now the important part of components of the computer is memory unit. The memory consists of two parts. One is primary memory, another is secondary memory. Primary memory is also having the two parts. One is ROM, another is RAM and secondary memory is we all are very familiar with this our hard disk, our DVDs, our CDs, uh, our pen drives all these are con consists under the secondary uh, storage devices, primary storage devices. First of all we will focus on this primary storage devices. So the next component is primary memory which is called random access memory. So this particular component is exist in every digital device. It, it is available in our mobile phone, it is available in our laptop, in every desktop device. It is a temporary storage memory in which our data saves temporarily. When I switched off our system, uh, the data which saved in this memory vanished, delete. Okay? When we restart our system again, then the operating system load one by one all the files into the RAM and then we uh, and, and then the CPU processes the things from the RAM. This is the basic purpose of RAM. So the RAM is of two type. One is SRAM, another is DRAM. Static RAM and dynamic random access memory. Static RAM. This IC, a small chip. This is called static RAM and our mobile devices and our small uh, devices like our air conditioner, our refrigerators, our smart televisions, all these are having this static RAM because it is having a small size and it is having, it is very fast as well. So that's why these mobile phones and everyone is having this SRAM. Then the second is dynamic RAM. This is the basic component of every digital computer every laptop every computer every laptop consists of this dynamic ram now the difference between sram and dynamic ram sram is situated very very near or you can say on to the cpu okay central processing unit so cpu access the data from the static ram and what is the purpose of dynamic ram the dynamic RAM access the operating system loads the files from our hard disk to the dynamic RAM and from the dynamic RAM the some part of file goes into the SRAM static RAM and from the static RAM our processor CPU executes the file and this cycle uh, pro and the process of this cycle goes on goes on goes on. So this is called the static RAM and dynamic RAM. Now the next component of the primary memory is ROM that is called read only memory. So in read only memory what happens? This is a type of chip which is available on every motherboard of electronic devices. Okay, This is the computer motherboard. So this is the ROM chip. The purpose of this ROM chip is it is uneditable. Okay, here the term is written non-volatile in nature. Non-volatile means we can't edit it, we can't delete the instructions. Once the instructions has been written in this, that instructions cannot be edited, that instructions cannot be deleted. So, the purpose of this ROM is it activates the hardware devices like our keyboard and mouse. When we uh, uh, power on our computer what happens our mouse our keyboard everything must be connected must be working so who is giving instruction to the keyboard and the mouse this this ROM is giving all the instructions this uh, ROM is handling all the things uh, which is controlling the keyboard mouse and other devices so this ROM is a very important part of every electronic device. It is the initial instructions which uh, makes our computer system, which helps our computer system to boot. So the ROM is classified into the three ROMs that is P-ROM, EP-ROM and EE-ROM. The meaning of this. P-ROM is called programmable ROM. It is 
वंस इट इज प्रोग्रामड इट कैन नॉट बी एडिटेड इट कैन नॉट बी डिलीटेड सो दिस टाइप ऑफ रोम इज सिचुएटेड इन आर इन आर डेस्कटॉप सिस्टम इन आर मोबाइल सिस्टम ओके वेयर एवर द डिवाइसिस विच आर यूज फॉर द यूजर्स दिस पर्टिकुलर पी रोम इज सिचुएटेड ऑन दो डिवाइसिस ओके जस्ट लाइक आर इन एयर कंडीशनर आर इन बिकॉज आर एयर कंडीशन आर ऑल्सो स्मार्ट सो वट टाइप ऑफ इंस्ट्रक्शन लिमिटेड इंस्ट्रक्शन आर रिटर्न इन द पी रोम एंड एंड प्लेस इन द एयर कंडीशनर और इन एवरी स्मार्ट डिवाइस कंसिस्ट ऑफ रोम एंड दिस रोम इज हैविंग अ स्मॉल इंस्ट्रक्शन वेरी लिमिटेड इंस्ट्रक्शन सिमिलरली ई पी रोम ई पी रोम स्टैंड फॉर इरेजेबल प्रोग्रामेबल रीड ओनली मेमरी दिस टाइप ऑफ in this type of rom we can erase the instructions but erp rom and eep rom for the layman for the user this ep rom and eep rom is not provided yes this type of roms are work uh, are are used in the research lab where uh, one chip has been um, has been manufactured and the researchers are doing the research deleting the instructions editing the instructions making new instructions installing the new instructions and checking the performance of the electronic devices so in ep rom the previous written instructions are deleted with the help of ultraviolet rays and in eep rom the instructions are uh, deleted with the help of electrically erasable programmable read only memory uh, the instructions are deleted using electrical signals so this is the basic difference between ep rom and eep rom so this was the end of uh, part 1 in the part 1 we have studied about the basic anatomy of our computer system our computer system consists of primary memory secondary memory cpu and we have studied in the part 1 that what is primary memory the types of primary memory and there are two types of primary memory one is ram another is rom and the ram is of two type and the rom is of three types so we have studied these things in the second part we will study about the functioning of cpu we will study about the components of the cpu how cpu works uh, how cpu executes the instruction and how are uh, instructions executed throughout the whole process so we will end we will study about the operating system what is the importance of operating system i recommend these engineering books from s chan publishing uh, if you like this video do like subscribe and share and press the bell icon for future notifications All rights reserved. This video has been prepared for educational purposes only. No part of it may be reproduced or copied without the permission of the copyright holder.